Pascal Lamy, many thanks for being with WPC-TV. You are a former Director General of the WTO and now a head of the Not Europe uh, think tank in Paris. Um, obvious question, what are the prospects and what is the importance of the TTIP and of the, uh, the Trans-Pacific Partnership as well, the, the two great um, endeavours? Well, I mean, they're not the only ones. No. Quite a lot of multilateral initiatives on services, on uh, IT products, uh, which are ongoing, and the prospects of which, in my view, are better than either TPP or TTIP, which are two very different animals. TPP is a sort of classical market uh, access negotiation, uh, very vast because it's there are many countries uh, in the Pacific uh, Rim. As we know, it's been going on for now more than four years. And uh, in my view, we're not near to completion if the ambition is to have something substantial. If the ambition is just to consolidate existing bilateral free trade agreements, it could happen quite soon. The transatlantic uh, uh, negotiation is a very different one. It's the first of a new brand of negotiations, which is not mostly about tariffs or subsidies or intellectual property, but about regulatory convergence, which is what opening trade transatlantic is about, which is leveling the playing field, but not the old way, the new way. It's in bad shape. It has a bad start. For both, on both sides, by the way, both on the European side and the American side, mainly because I think uh, the sponsors of this negotiation uh, were very bad at telling what it is about. How is it misunderstood? It's misunderstood because they haven't explained that this is about precaution, this is about the level of precaution, this is about the administration of this level of precaution, and they haven't given the good arguments in favor, which is A, that the only way it can work is to adopt the highest level of precaution on either side. And second, the big geopolitical price for that is that if there's a Euro-US convergence on a standard for uh, car equipment uh, or pesticide uh, residues in flowers, this de facto becomes the world standard, uh, which is a very important thing for industries and services on both sides. Final question. Um, I suppose one could argue that globalization has actually really done rather well at keeping protectionism at bay, but we have severe employment problems in Europe, uh, in parts of Asia, America is doing pretty well. Um, has globalization, is it still succeeding? Is it still the, the game in town or is it being threatened? No, I think I mean, globalization is going on because the shaping forces of globalization, which is basically technological change, uh, is there and will remain. And globalization understood in trade opening is nothing but the transmission belt of this technological change. Now, there are backlashes against uh, globalization, uh, not mostly for economic reasons, but for cultural, psychological reasons, which have to do with this notion in many places that uh, globalization is about losing your identity. And that's a syndrome which is extremely well manipulated by populist forces, which is easier to do, and we, we've known that forever, in times of economic and social crisis. Now, the question is whether globalization is the problem <laughs> or the solution. I think under some conditions, which have not always been met everywhere, globalization is more on the side of the solution than of the problem. Pascal Lamy, thank you very much. My pleasure.